guys, I am over at, uh, well, I guess this wouldn't be HQ Titan Medical. This would be Batman's cave. I guess you would say his uh, palace. Um, and we've been shooting all today, tomorrow, and yesterday. But I'm excited for you guys to see this. The reason Mike O'Hearn, Mr. Universe, American Gladiator, doing movies now, father, husband, why did he choose Titan Medical? Because I wanted to stay on top in the sense of what my health and fitness and life was. But beyond that, I need to be able to tussle, you know, in 10, 15 years. I cannot be, I just don't think it is, the, the father on the couch. I want to be the father that's wrestling the kid. And again, keep in mind, the little things you might miss is that I am a late father with a very young son. So, you know, uh, most people would look at that and go, well, see, you should have had him earlier. I had him at the right time. This is perfect. I get to use Titan Medical, and I'm going to use them to benefit me and get my health to the most pinnacle level it can be so I can do that and tussle with my son and be a great husband in the bedroom, on, on the courts, uh, in the field, bringing home the bacon, all those kind of things that I wanted to do in life at this stage. And it's all possible through optimizing my health with Titan Medical. So Titan Medical, Big John, thank you so much for um, allowing me to use your service and what your your knowledge, your your, your staff, your your uh, experts, to make me the very best Titan that's ever been seen. Thank you. Hey, my name is Jessica Azzarello, and I am here to talk to you today about one of my favorite therapies from Titan Medical Center, the injectable biotin. Over the years, I had struggled with different aspects of health. I ended up losing a lot of my hair, so I started taking the injectable biotin about six months ago, and my hair is very incredible. It's actually grown back, and it's grown longer, but also thicker. So I was actually born with very thin hair. So when I started losing my hair, you could notice when I would pull my hair back, I would have like bald spots. And I would even have people make fun of me about it. And it was just like really hard for me. So I'm very, very thrilled with the progress so far. I basically, um, I receive my therapies every single month. And every morning what I do is I use a very tiny needle and I just inject it. And you don't even feel anything, but you know, I used to have to wash my hair every single day, and if I didn't, it was really stringy, it looked really gross. I actually can go a couple days and not wash my hair, and my hair actually is full and voluminous and curly, and you know, so I highly recommend it if you're looking to improve your hair. You definitely can't go wrong with Titan Medical Center injectable biotin. How's it going folks? Cass, nurse practitioner at Titan Medical Center. Here with Shanil, also one of the nurse practitioners here at Titan Medical Center. Today, we're gonna to talk to you about our favorite Titan Medical Center therapies. So Cass, tell me about one of your th favorite therapies. So many therapies that I absolutely love here at Titan Medical Center. If I had to choose one, I'm gonna to have to go with Hercules Potion. It's a good choice. Intermuscular, hour before you train, get that into the muscle. It's gonna help with contraction, it's gonna help with performance, blood flow, vascularity. It's all about the performance in the gym. So running, biking, rowing, lifting weights. It is a great way to go. Now, I would have to say my favorite is our ECA Stack Plus, which is one of our Good fat one. burner pills. You can actually combine that one with the Hercules Potion for an even more optimal workout performance. With the ECA Stack Plus, that's gonna have your ephedrine, caffeine, aspirin, chromium, and B12. So that's really gonna help with increasing that overall metabolism, energy levels. It's also gonna help with burning fat and carbohydrates as well with the chromium that's in there. Talk about a next level workout, ECA and Hercules Potion, well you can't get that over the counter. You can't, and of course, as we already kind of talked about, you know, in one of our previous videos that y'all might wanna go ahead and watch, uh, the injectable format, you're gonna get a lot better bioavailability to improve absorption. Yeah, absolutely, right into the muscle, 
receptors travel that medication right to the site for absorption so it's high potency folks i'm talking good pumps good energy all around exactly so those are some of our favorite therapies if you want to find out what yours is go ahead and give us a call 727-389-3220 have a great day folks Peptides, similar to proteins, are short chains of amino acids that our body naturally produces. They act as signaling molecules within the body. There are over 7,000 known peptides in our bodies, and all of these different peptides have a wide range of functions, including immune system health, weight loss, improved cognitive functions, and many more. For more information on our injectable peptide therapies, call or text Titan Medical Center at 727-389-3220 or visit us online at titanmedicalcenter.com. And again, again, I annoyed John about this. What can I do for my joints or the ligaments? These are the most important thing um, for a guy that's still trying to <laughs> do this lifestyle of being at the pinnacle. And so I can't imagine how much it will help just the average weekend warrior if it helped me who's at the peak of my career at this level at this yes. time. And so it was, here it is, you ready? BPC yep. and a TB500. Yep. What actually is this? BPC157 and TB500 are awesome for a number of different reasons, like tendons, joints, ligaments, muscles. Um, you know, if you have open wounds per se, healing those quicker. Uh, BPC-157 is That's actually... just like for Wolverine? Oh yeah, it's, they say it's the Wolverine drug of protocol. Um, you know, That's I, great. It, you know, I don't want to like push it that dramatic, but it has helped so many different patients heal from so many different agging ailments, whether they're acute or chronic. So just examples, just for me, when BPC-157 first came out, um, I used it for my shoulders. I had tears in my shoulders, it worked great. And I was not a big believer of it. I'm like, man, this sounds too good to be true. Right? But when I utilized it for myself, I'm like, man, this is amazing. And this was probably about seven years ago. And since then, so many different patients have benefited from so many different ways, whether it was golf elbow, right? So that's right here. Tennis elbow, which is like right here. Um, you know, you have your shoulder problems from whether you're an athlete prior or maybe you're in the gym and you're lifting and you're going really, really heavy and going crazy and you hurt yourself. So this is, like, remove all that world and kind of just get the, the, the working man, the guy that's out there doing labor and his yeah. back and his knees from lifting concrete and everything. It's like, Absolutely. man, it's cool to think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's cool to think that this could help him um, at his job and just getting home instead of destroying his body to make a living mm -hmm. we get to rebuild that thing and help him stay healthy absolutely i mean wear and tear right our bodies are all going through wear and tear whether we're working a construction job or playing sports we're lifting in the gym just daily activities maybe just throwing the baseball as you get older things happen you want to keep yourself the best you possibly can um, and preventing some of these injuries and you know, even if you're lifting weights and you're trying to grow muscle, we know that the muscle is gonna grow faster than any of those ligaments or tendons in there. And if you try to go too heavy, these are going to damage those because they're not catching up to the muscle. Um, and you're gonna cause yourself damage and you're gonna have to regress back on whatever results you're getting because you're injured. And nobody likes to be injured, right? And we wanna get over our injuries as fast as possible. And that's what BPC-157 TV500 can do for you. I, I want you guys to understand one big key point here. 
regardless of my career in the health and fitness world and what I've been able to do on TV, gladiators throughout my, I was those kind of battle shows for over 35 years. This is me and John talking to you guys that maybe don't want to go to that level. Fine, that's great. But if it helps somebody that was and is at that level, what can it do for you? All right. And like John said first off, because I'm the same way, he goes, I didn't believe it. And trust me, I'm a skeptical guy. And I was like, I hope this works. And it did. And so at the end of the day, for you guys at home that are going, uh, wow, what a change. Uh, just to live, live not in pain yes is an amazing thing for you guys at home I, I i don't know if you fully grasp that and that might be an aha, aha moment later where you don't even realize that lower back is up the knees or shoulders are bent and so this can help you guys and just again get moving and grooving over to titan medical right now because they can get you on that protocol absolutely it's the best healing peptide protocol you can be on What's up guys, John here. I'm Sharice. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. Awesome, good information that you guys can utilize. Honestly, whatever doesn't break you will make you stronger. That is the truth. Every week, if you don't know, we come up with these tips and tricks to help you guys enhance your relationships. I hope they all see this episode. Whether it's reigniting that passion or just developing a better, stronger relationship. We went through a lot of these trials and tribulations, so we wanted to give you guys the shortcut I mean, you guys might even do this and not realize it, and your partner might be currently upset at you, so we might help you in that aspect. This is true. <laughs> so, we're gonna... What's up, guys? John here. I'm Sharice. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner. So every week, me and Sharice are just going down the list, checking it twice, and making <laughs> sure we're giving you guys the best tips, tricks, and things that will hopefully help your guys' relationship, marriage, or future relationship for some of you guys and girls out there. So this week, uh, we were talking about beforehand, and we're like, you know what, what's really, really good that's going to cover all the bases here? Um, and something that happens to everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a girl or a guy, if you're in a marriage, or you're engaged, or you guys are just dating. Mm -hmm. So this week, we're going to cover, uh, you know, how to find resolutions to arguments, fighting, or bickering. Okay, and what's the best way to go about these things? How to deal with it. How to deal with it, right? Yeah. How to deal with it. Because it takes time to does, know your person right? to really deal with it. And, you know, some people, you know, if you're just in the honeymoon stage, you might not have had an argument yet. So you're like, oh, we don't argue yet. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Well, give it a little <laughs> bit longer. I'm sure it's going to come up once it's, or twice. It's okay? coming. It's coming. You know, it, just, it just depends <laughs> on the people, but it's going to come, right? No matter if you're an alpha, you're a beta, you know, in the relationship, things are going to happen. So how do you go about these things? And what do you kind of look for? That's the main question, right? So you get in a fight, let's say with your significant other or you're dating somebody or whatever it is, uh, they have this argument, right? And you start arguing about these things uh, and you feel really strong about your side and they feel really strong about their side. So what happens in that argument? So people, I guess people argue in different ways, right? There's like an abundance of ways, right? Of how people argue, <laughs> For right? sure. There could be, you know, you have your, your couples that yell and scream, right? And they both yell and scream and nobody hears anything because both of you guys are yelling and no one's listening, right? That's true. They're just yelling and screaming at the same time. That makes no sense, but it's what happens. Um, then you have couples that, you know, they, uh, they, they, they might... They might pick things up and throw them. Maybe not necessarily at you, right? Don't do but that. they might break things in the house, right? Just I, I don't know why this happens. It just happens to, you know, be one of the things, right? I, I'd be lying if I left that out that you didn't pick something up off the shelf and throw it, or pick up a plate and throw it, because this has happened to many couples, right? Um, and then you have the people that uh, they don't yell or scream at all, which is probably really bad. You have the small little argument or disagreement or whatever it might be. It might be a big disagreement. And then you don't talk about it at all, right? Which is not good because now it's you do this thing where it's like festering and it's and it bottles up, right? right. And I've gotten better about, you know, not letting things bottle up with me. John's gotten better over the years not letting things bottle up with him. And, you know, try to address it on, you know, on at least within a 24-hour time frame. Calm down for a second, then address it. 
because you know if it bottles up obviously it's just gonna you're gonna be you're gonna blow up like a little teapot right so you know it's just it's a matter of time before it's like and then all of a sudden boom you know it's never a good thing it's like a, a, a nuclear explosion right so i mean when people argue right they start talking about things and just something comes up whatever I want to do it like this. I don't think we should do it like this. And then you guys start arguing about it. And then it just starts ramping up, ramping up, ramping up. And that's kind of where people start getting, where it starts out with a conversation. The other side doesn't see the same way. And then it starts, you know, going higher and higher in pitch as, as far as your voice goes. Some people can, most people do it like that, I guess. Some people can really talk about it and then just go silent, which is not good either. Right. Because they're bottling up. But if they start getting up and you guys start yelling at each other, like, where's the resolution with that, right? Or right. what can happen, or what can make things better in that situation? Um, now, some people are, are different. You know, some people, and you want to hit these things head on. You don't never want to let them fester, sit, or keep going days, weeks, months, years, because it it's going to get really It starts to build bad. animosity, yeah. right? Animosity for the couple, or animosity yeah. against the person. Right. And you're like, oh, I just don't like this person no more. Yeah. That's not good either. Yeah. You know, but if you start yelling at each other, what can you guys do to maybe take it down a notch? Um, now, for me, you know, it might be, mm-hmm. listen, let me take a little bit of time. Let me take a little bit of breather. That way you can kind of run through things in your head a little bit. Kind of, you know, calm down a little bit because, you know, you're high, you're tense. You know, and that's not good, right? That's aggression to a certain extent. And you don't want to be aggressive with your partner either. You know, you mm-hmm. want to... You want to sit back and be able to talk to them in more of a mellow mood, even if you feel really strong about something, you're really upset about it, but at least you can talk to them and you can facilitate and communicate with them. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. We talked about communication every episode. Communication is key. You, you see you see how this, this keeps circling back to communication? <laughs> Always does. It, it's really a vital part of any relationship, whether right. it's a, a love relationship or work relationship, whatever right. it is. So at that point, when you can calm down and you can really communicate, you know, how you feel about it, why you feel about it this way, um, and then what's the resolution going to happen for both of you guys to come out of this, both happy to a certain extent, right? Compromising. The compromise is huge. Right. Huge. It is. It really is. That meet each other at a halfway point. It really is. Because you're not always right, okay? And they're not always wrong. Yeah. So you can't always say, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. It'll never work out. I it's, promise it's you, it's never going to work out. And you guys can't yell at each other. Because listen, me and John have been together a long time, right? And I always double our years. Like, I want to say we've been together 20 years. And the reason why it's 20 years is because we are together every single day of every single hour, every minute of every day. So technically, right, you got to, like, double the time, right? So let's just say whatever, 13, 14 years, whatever, double the years to 20. So you learn people over time and i'd be lying to you if i told you that me and john haven't had blowout arguments when i talk about blowout arguments in the very beginning and guys we were younger okay i was 21 so it's okay right but you know blowout arguments were screaming yelling you know just next level right i mean even go outside yelling out there making a scene you know i was good at making scenes right and this is not the way to handle things but at least i can tell you from my experience of what i did that i probably shouldn't have done and now i do handle differently because i'm much more mature and i'm older and i understand my husband and um you know i just try to now i handle it a much different way but back then it was just I was so hot, so ready, hot, ready, boom, boom. It didn't matter. I didn't care what he had to say. It was what I had to say. You're going to listen to me. And if you start talking, I'm going to talk louder. And then just it escalates, right? So one of you guys is going to have to take a step down, you know, or maybe both of you guys need to take a step apart, you know, because that step apart even, you know, because John used to want to go for a ride, right, in the car. Of course, when he wants to go for a ride, I'm like, well, who are you going to go talk to in the car? Who are you going to go call? Huh? Who are you going to call? Are you going to go call and tell, tell them all what's going on? Huh? You want you want their advice? Is that what's going to happen? Who are you going to call when you go in the car? Where are you going? How long are you going to be gone for? And it would be like, I mean, this poor guy has been through a lot, right? I feel bad. <laughs> I do. Help me! Help me! <laughs> I feel bad for John. He's been through a lot, right? 
But, you know, you learn over time and, you know, it kind of comes to the compromise of like, you know, to leave him alone. Maybe he doesn't have to leave, so I don't have to scream and be like, where are you going? What are you doing? Da, da, da. He, maybe you could just step away for a minute or I'll walk away for a minute. And it really, he doesn't take that much time to cool off. It usually takes maybe, back in the day, it was a li- like a little bit, an hour or two. Nowadays, it's maybe like 15, 20 minutes, right? But, you know, you learn your partner and then you apply it. You can't just disregard it because oh. you'll never get anywhere. Definitely. You guys will always continue fighting yeah. and you'll never be able to get any resolutions out of it because you keep fighting the same exact way. Yeah. I mean, we used to, I'm telling you, we used to have blood arguments, yeah. super blood arguments. And nowadays, you know, and I'll use an example, you know, of what I do now. And now I'm going to tell him. I don't think I've told him this yet. So, you know. Happy ABC, he gets to know. But nowadays, if there is a disagreement, right? And, you know, I don't care if we're around people or even if we're not around people, right? And I know that he's pissed off, right? Or he's in a bad mood or he doesn't feel good, whatever, okay? And he, because he doesn't normally get mad. So it's very seldom that I have to do this. So I just suck it up and do it. So if I disagree with him, and I, I, this would be something back in the day where I would fight with him about it and say, uh uh-uh, uh, that is not how it went down. This is how it went down. This is not right. I think you're wrong, whatever. At this point, now I just say, okay, that's it. I just say, okay. I don't even say, I don't even give an answer or anything. I just say, okay. And like when you say that, when you just say that, it kind of just, um, it just stops like, I mean, it really gives your significant other no other option to just keep talking about it. And then if they could say it again, then you just say, okay. And just, you don't have to say it mean or rude or anything. Just say, okay. If you need to talk about it in an hour about, okay, hey, listen, you know, I think that this, this could have been done differently or this is how I felt about that. But in the moment, in the heat of the moment, when you know that they're mad and they don't feel good, whatever's going on, right? Just take the moment to just say, okay. And I promise you, like, that is something that is the best advice I can give you. That has taken me 10 years to do, okay? So, because I am very, 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 very passionate about what I do. And obviously, if I think I'm right about something, I'll be the first person to speak up and be like, hold up, stop right there. That is not how I went down. And I don't know why you're yelling at me about it, but this is what's going on. Now I've learned, I'll say it when I need to say it, but... Every once in a while, I'll give it to him and just say, okay. Because he can't argue with me if I just say, okay. I'm going to keep yelling at you. No one's going to keep yelling at you if you say, okay. So just say, okay. Don't say it sarcastically. Don't say it like that. Just say, okay. Because that's just going to add more Don't say, fire. okay. Mm-hmm. Sure. Don't do that. Okay. Just maybe just agree for the moment. Okay. To just let things cool off, simmer. And then if you need to address it in an hour, then address it in an hour when things are cooled down and they're not in the moment. But that is just an example of me telling you how to handle it at that very moment. Now, you may not like it. Someone like me, I'm alpha female in this relationship. This is the alpha outside of this relationship. I am the alpha everywhere, right? So it's in my genes to be like, no, I am going to speak. So... (laughs) But, you know, I, sometimes you just have to take, you know, bite your tongue for a minute and just let it ride, you know? And sometimes it takes, it does take some training to do. It yeah. takes training to do. And I'm it sure takes you... takes self-control. I mean, you, I'm sure you have things that you've probably come up with up to date on how to deal with me. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, because I mean, I'm crazy. You know, I'll, like, no, I'll just, I'll just I'll try to talk to her about the things. Like, you know, like, listen... <laughs> Obviously, I don't do it in front of people or whatever. That's the first mistake if you do that, right? But, you know, if you have a problem or an issue and you guys need to talk about it, um, then at that point, you need to set some time aside and kind of think about how you're going to relay this to your partner, right? And don't sugarcoat things. I don't mean it like that. You need to be truthful and straightforward, but talk in a respectful manner. Like, listen, you know, I really don't like the way this went down. Um, I don't really want to do this anymore. And at that point... You know, can we come to terms with that? And I think your partner will be more responsive to that. You know, a lot of people, the first mistake that happens is is they hold these things in. They start drinking or mm-hmm. doing something else. Mm-hmm. And then at that point, it comes out wrong. Uh, and then it's both parties wrong. start fighting really bad. And they might not even think 
about what they're saying to a certain extent. Uh, and it might come out wrong and it might come out really bad, right? And this can add to more problems down the line if you do it like that. Mm -hmm. So do it in a sober manner. You know, talk to them about what the problem was, why it affected you, or why you think that you were right in the situation. Um, and at that point, you guys got to talk about it and then come to a compromise. Say, listen, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Don't that, be scared to you say know. you're sorry. No, that's the first thing. Yeah. Don't you know, be scared to say you're sorry. It takes a bigger person, you know, and listen, I'm alpha male out there, and I know a lot of alpha guys like that that think that it's a weakness to an apology, right? And that's not true, right? It takes a bigger man to be able to apologize that they've done wrong um, and want to move forward. You know, that's that's a big, big thing. But a lot of people don't want to do that because it's a sign of weakness. And that's how I was raised. You know, that's how the old schoolers are. Don't apologize because it's a sign of weakness. Uh, I don't really think that now. I, I think that, you know, if, if I'm a wrong... And uh, I'm going to apologize for it because I truly mean the apology. Yeah, don't say it if you really don't yeah, mean like, it. Whatever, I'm sorry. Yeah, that just that comes across really bad, right? Yeah. Your partner's going to take that and be like, well, are you really sorry? Or are you just saying because you wanted me to hear that? Right. And, you know, and then your actions speak louder than words, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you apologize and you compromise and you still do it, then you're really not sorry and you're just going to do it anyway. And that's going to piss them off even more. Right. So, you know, at that point, you got to come to a certain, it comes to a certain aspect in your life where you're going to grow a little bit more maturity wise, mm -hmm. and especially in arguing. If, if you have something that you guys need to, to battle out per se, you guys need to sit, talk about it, and then find a resolution without screaming at each other, um, bring each other down. Saying things against your partner, you know, you're calling yeah, names and stuff. You're such. calling them names, and that's yeah, I mean, a big one. Because we've once all you done say, it, probably, right? Yeah, for sure. And then once you say it, you can't take it back. You can't take it back. So, all you can do is kind of try to fix it after the fact, but you can't take it back. Once it comes out of your mouth, yeah. you can't take it back. So at that point, that's the point of this conversation. Make sure you guys are growing in your relationship. And this means if you have arguments, approach it like an adult, approach it civilized. You know, with love to your partner, even if you hate what would happen, you find out something horrible happened, you have to approach it like that. You know, be level-headed. Um, and that's the best advice I can give you guys from my end. I mean, that is what it is. So grow up, all right? <laughs> Things are going to happen. Deal with them. Hit them straight head on. Uh, and show love Just to your don't partner. hit them straight head on with the plate in the kitchen. Don't hit them. Yeah. Don't fight outside. Don't throw any glasses you know, or break you want, anything. You don't want your significant other going to jail or anything like this oh, either, right? No. Unless they're doing something really bad. Never you. call the cops. <laughs> Unless they're doing something really bad. <laughs> you really, guys, really need to. Right? Leave because them out of it. <laughs> that's going to cause other problems down the road. That's going to cause more problems, yeah. So <laughs> this is just another little tip and trick for me and Cherise for Cupid's Corner. We're here with you guys every Sunday at 11 a.m., here on ABC. Make sure you guys go check out our social media, Titan Medical Center on Instagram and Facebook, TikTok too, and all our great videos and contents are on YouTube. Go there, Titan Medical Center, look it up. Click subscribe, hit the all notification bell, and you'll be tuned in to me and Sharice and everything Titan Medical Center. We love you guys. Thank you guys for the support week in and week out, and we'll see you next week on another Cupid's Corner. See you then.